Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about neem oil. I'll show you the recipe, how you make it, how you use it, when to spray it, what we're spraying it on, and that's where I want to start. This is my experimental garden. Ignore the dust for today. That's going to be a future video if you want to subscribe. But this is kale, and kale, collards, broccoli, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, all the related plants get cabbage worms, cabbage loopers, other chewing worms, and these were let to really get um, invaded by that white butterfly. It's not a moth, I've been corrected, but that white butterfly that comes and lays eggs. This is a different variety of insect, but when you start seeing small holes like this, that means eggs were laid on the underside. The caterpillars hatch, they eat the egg, they eat a small hole, and then they continue to grow. You'll see all the little droppings on the leaves. That means you have caterpillars. And when you turn the leaves over, you can see that they're everywhere eating holes into everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're preventing with the neem oil. This, is, this plant has been, you know, let to grow with no defenses. You can see one in there just so that I could get some of the uh, worms on there. And you can see how the holes start small and then they just kind of work their way to making bigger holes as they grow. All right, so let's go to the main garden and I'll show you how to make uh, the recipe using neem oil and I'll talk about neem oil because you want to make sure you buy the right kind of neem oil. All right, so let's just get to the recipe first for those of you that just want that. To make the neem oil spray, it's one to two tablespoons of neem oil and then either one tablespoon of the Castile type soaps. This is a very simple soap that has nothing added to it or if you're using the detergent soaps or other soaps one teaspoon and the reason you put soap in here is so that the oil disperses through the water when you shake it it should stay dispersed for a good 10 15 20 seconds so that when you spray your plants you get a nice even coat of spray and you got to shake in between i recommend using one gallon of water in like a milk container or something Neem oil doesn't store that well. You've probably got maybe three days to five days, but if you don't use it all, you can just put this into the refrigerator, keep it cold. You know, I make the sprays in the gallon and then I put it into my sprayer. Now, about neem oil. I sell this. It's 100% cold pressed neem oil. That's what you want to buy. If you buy it from me or other places, it must be 100% cold pressed because that's what has all the natural components in there. It has the azadiractin, and it's the azadiractin, that component in the neem, that kills the chewing insects. If you buy this off of a shelf, typically, it's a hydrophobic extract of neem. It'll say it right on the label, hydrophobic extract, and they take out all the good stuff. All you have is the neem oil, none of the components, and you might as well be spraying olive oil or vegetable oil. You want 100% cold-pressed neem oil if you're using it for chewing insects. I'll show you how I'm going to spray my plants. You want to spray every 7 to 14 days, top side, bottom sides of the leaves. And the frequency depends on how much it rains and kind of what the problem is. You know, some places you might be having a big issue and you want to do it every 7 days. Other places, every 14 days works fine. Before I spray my kales and stuff like that, I harvest the leafy greens, then I spray, and then I harvest again about 7 days later. Alright, so let's make a batch up. I'll cut in some video of that white butterfly to show you what is laying the eggs on your leaves. I also have this journal for, uh, for sale at my seed shop. I recommend keeping a journal, writing down when these white butterflies show up, writing down when insects and pests come to your garden. This way you know when to start spraying ahead of time. So it's pretty simple. One gallon. I just use one teaspoon. You could use more, but I find one works fine. Now neem oil can thicken up even at 70 degrees. We're gonna do, since the moth is everywhere, we're gonna just do one and a half. Can thicken up, if it thickens up, just put it into a bowl of warm water and it will, you know, turn back to an oil. Now again, if you're using like Dawn soap or detergents or soaps that have detergents or degreasers, use a teaspoon to start. This is the Castile type. Oh, that's water coming out. I left this out in the rain. There we go. Woo! Well, that's a lot of soap. 
and then you see how the oil floats on top that's no good so once you add the soap it disperses and you just want that to stay dispersed you know for a good 10 15 20 seconds and you shake between sprays here are two butterflies I don't know if you can see them in the camera Let's get that's the moth or actually butterfly down there those are the problem insects. All right, so that disperses nicely. Let me set up for spraying. Oh, one more tip. When you get a sprayer, I like to put a blue line because sometimes it's hard to see the marks on here, but that's one gallon, one and a half. I'm sorry, half a gallon, one gallon, one and a half gallon, two gallons, and this should fill right to here. So here is my uh, main row of kale. I've already harvested it, harvested the uh, leaves. And again, I'm going to spray. Five, seven days I would harvest again. You can wash neem oil off. The leaves of the kale plants are nice and strong so they can take a good washing. And there's some holes on there. I've been treating these. Nothing is 100% perfect, but just nice fine spray. Top sides, undersides. And you're just getting a nice coating of oil everywhere by putting it on the undersides, and that's where they tend to sit. If it rains, it stays on longer. Every seven to 14 days. In between, give it a shake and spray under. And that's how I would do the kale. Let me show you some other plants. Here are my Brussels sprouts, and you can see more holes in there. First thing I wanna do is really coat the tops. And you're getting to the point where it's almost dripping but you don't need the excess really falling to the ground it won't hurt the plant and then it's a pain but you really want to get the undersides there it is so i have dozens of those flying around every day if i didn't use the neem everything would be chewed down and again we got the tops really get the undersides of each leaf this actually helps with white flies too on your Brussels sprouts. I can smell the neem oil. That means it's dispersed nicely through there. And I would go and just make sure I coat the undersides. Now let me take you back to the kale I showed in the beginning of the video. It's been a week since that was treated. So here's the kale from the beginning of the video. And it pretty much is where it was at. The leaves that have been chewed are dying out. But when you pick them up, there's nothing left under there. This was the original leaf, and they're gone. And how, you, and it actually, well first let me just say, once the worms eat the azadiractin, the component in the neem oil, it takes you know anywhere from two to five days for them to die off, but they stop feeding. You'll know when you have an outbreak, because you, only, you have holes, but you also have the droppings everywhere. When you stop seeing the droppings, the worms have stopped feeding. So again, use a journal. If you wanna pick one up at my seed shop, I appreciate it. But you want to figure out how often you need to spray. Every 7 to 14 days, if it rains heavily, spray a little more often. Otherwise, otherwise, there it goes. Otherwise, the fine coating of oil on the undersides will take care of the worms. And also, when you coat the eggs, it messes up um, the development, can mess up sexual reproduction. But most importantly, make sure you buy, as I've said, 100% cold pressed neem oil. Thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.